Oh, ho, 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 ho. just look at this. If this doesn't make you hard, I don't know what will. I've been hunting for this motherboard for several years now, and it's been difficult seeing how it can still cost hundreds of dollars, even though this is an 11 year old motherboard at this point. But finally, I managed to get my hands on this. The Crosshair V formula from ASUS ROG. And it costs so much because it's one of the most iconic motherboards from the early 2010s. Seeing how it's one of the best motherboards available for the AM3 Plus platform. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment for so, so long. And I gotta say, even though it's of course bought used, the condition is pretty amazing, even of the box and everything. Oh, just look at this. If this doesn't make you hard, I don't know what will. And okay, um, I think I found a problem. And I mean a massive, massive problem. Do you, uh, uh, do you see what's wrong here? I have no idea. What did that guy do to this? And I, and I honestly have a hard time of seeing if that was done in shipping or if the motherboard was just in this kind of state to begin with. That is so unfortunate. And also the tops of these are really sticky for some reason. <laughs> like the rest of the mobile is rather clean, but that is just, I don't know what's been on it and I don't want to know. Okay, so apart from this, which looks fairly fixable, the condition is absolutely fantastic. And the amount of features on this 2011 motherboard that are still not commonplace on a 2022 board just blows my mind. Look at that, you have start, reset, and even an OC button right there on the motherboard. That is absolutely awesome. And also there's one more thing on here that's actually pretty interesting, but I have no idea what it's about. Can you see right here? That is a Molex connector, and next to it there's a switch that says ROG Connect. You see that? It's a little like hardware switch. I have no idea what that could be. Interesting. Now there's a good reason why this board became as famous as it was. Because back in the day, there were no high-end FX CPUs that could warrant such a motherboard. Especially seeing how the FX CPUs, they were pretty good budget chips, but Intel had a performance crown. So when AMD thought they had no choice left, they descended deep into the workshop and worked tirelessly on creating a monster that probably should never have been created. And after years of work, the AMD engineers emerged from the basement victorious and enjoyed the sun for the first time in years because they just created this. The FX9590. This was a 5 gigahertz chip, but that came with a price. That price being a 220 watt TDP in 2013. Suffice it to say, barely any motherboard and much less cooler could actually tame this beast. So then, of course, motherboards like the Crosshair V became a necessity. And even beyond that, just the amount of care that went into everything on this motherboard is insane. For example, just look at this. This red part of the heatsink here on the VRMs is the shape of the ROG logo. And the rear I.O. is also pretty impressive for 2011. You have six channel audio, tons of USB, gigabit LAN, you have four USB 3, optical SPDIF, eSATA, which was still a big deal back then, or at least a moderately big deal, plus PS2 and two more USB 3. For 2011, this thing was a treat like no other. But let's put this beauty aside and see what else actually came with this. Because I'm actually curious what's in this other box that's right here. Okay, I'm guessing, yep, that's all the cables, that's the drivers, that is the user guide, which has clearly seen metadata. But again, if you're on this stuff new, you're going to be literally paying probably thousands of dollars at this point. Uh, isn't this a sign of time? So you have an SLI bridge as well. Now, never mind, I was wrong. It's a Crossfire bridge. You have a Crossfire, and here is your SLI bridge. The choices, the choices for dual GPU setups here. And oh my word, what on earth is this thing? Ah. It's a three-way SLI bridge. Nice! This motherboard came with everything you need to run three-way SLI on it. Isn't that high-tech and impressive? Now, this is something that manufacturers don't even do nowadays. You have these labels for your SATA cables, so you can label everything. That is pretty cool. Though, can we also appreciate the fact that there is no SSD labels, but you have two optical drive labels instead? Oh, 2011. You were so... Uh... So 2011. And here's something else that the industry finally decided to embrace recently. Housings for all your front side connectors so you don't get mangled and stuff. That is actually pretty cool. So now we only have one thing left to check. If this thing still 
actually works. Okay, let me just take off this board from my current test bench. I'm gonna be so annoyed if I've gone for all of this just to find out that the motherboard's like broken or something. I am going to be extremely annoyed. If this motherboard is broken, I'm gonna find who has sold me it and I'm gonna shove this motherboard up his... Okay, now pretty much everything is in, including a CPU and cooler. It's just an FX8350 for now, but whatever. Now let's see if it actually works. GPU-wise, let's just throw in this Radeon 280X in there for now. So now let's just see if it's gonna work. And I don't have to plug in any connectors here because all I have to do is press this gorgeous looking start button. Okay, it's going. It's going. Is it gonna display anything though? Would you look at that? Everything is being detected perfectly. Oh, this is going to be epic. I absolutely cannot wait to get building with this motherboard and the FX9590. So if you wanna catch all the amazing stuff I'll be doing with this motherboard, then definitely subscribe so you don't miss it. And hey, if you wanna pick up, not this motherboard, but it's, you know, great, great grandson, then our Amazon links to it are gonna be down in the video description below. Because if you use those links, you don't pay anything extra, while we get some money back, it gets reinvested straight back into the channel for insane purchases like this one. Then you're also gonna find our Patreon if you wanna support the channel that way, and even just one single dollar month truly goes a long way while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, OKB, Meg Sumner, Shane Oakcroft, Lansby, and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so, so much. The support truly goes a long way. Then you're also going to find our most store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>